Uno, dos, tres. Eins, zwei, drei. Ich nix sprechen sehr gut als Deutsch, Monsieur. Uh, my name is George Bowring, and I went to Victoria College from Monday through Saturday. <laughs> In 1953-4, <laughs> I had 8 a.m. classes. They didn't, I was really surprised to see Victoria, University of Vic, Victoria College, they didn't do the traditional half-past-the-hour classes. They did the on-the-hour classes. So I had an 8 a.m. Saturday morning ge Geography 101 lab. Luckily, I was sat in the back, and we were did it in an actual lab room, and I got to lay my head on the table. <laughs> I, hard, I never sat in the middle. I either sat in the back of the room or in the front of the room. It all depends. It's just like poetry readings. If I really like the poet, I sit way in the front. <laughs> <laughs> the most popular song that year was uh, That's Amore by Dean Martin. And he'd say, uh, when the moon hits you, I like a big pizza pie. And I'd say, what a great song. What the hell is a pizza pie? <laughs> I had no idea what it was. <laughs> I played basketball for the, for Vic College. I was on, like, I was not a star, but I was on the basketball team. And I played forward, even though I was only six foot two. <laughs> Um, although when I joined the Air Force, they claimed I was six foot three, but I wasn't. Probably the place I liked the most was these, the sort of, I don't know what you'd call it. It wasn't like a student union because it wasn't big enough to have a thing, but it, and it was kind of like the cafeteria or hanging around smoking cigarettes and eating. And so what we'd do was drink coffee and eat donuts, and it was two big sticky donuts for seven cents. So coffee and donuts was like, about 15 cents. <laughs> now, I realized at the time that that was cheap for donuts because regularly it was seven cents for one sticky donut anywhere else. But there it was two for, because it was paid, it was, I don't know, took, taken care of by the university or something. There was a moose head on the wall that people were always putting scarves around his neck and cigarettes in his mouth. I remember that beautifully, distinctively. It was a nice physical environment with that mountain behind you and that I thought, oh, this building, why, it's older than I am, <laughs> which was something I <laughs> experienced I didn't have really in where I came from. <laughs> like Oliver, the town that I grew up in, was founded in uh, 1921, I think, which was not that many years before I was founded. <laughs> Um, and here it was in this, here was a place where they had all kinds of streets with street names. We didn't have any street names in Oliver. How did you get arrested? He, he just said, oh, it's over, you know, like two, it's over on Andy, the street Andy Edgerton lives on. It's over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we did then. <laughs> but in Victoria, they had street names. I became utterly sophisticated. So when I came back to Oliver, before I went away for my summer job up north. I was like uh, the big city guy, right? City slicker. <laughs> my history class um, at Vic College, I turned in an essay. I was just how ignorant I was. What a dumb, small town, ignorant boy I was. I wrote my essay in red ink. <laughs> this is like with a fountain pen, right? I had no idea that was not allowed. <laughs> and he, so the, when I got the essay, but I got it back, he said, it's, it's the professor's prerogative to use red ink. <laughs> he wrote in black ink. <laughs> like, wh what did I write while I was there besides, you know, essays for classes? Uh, because when I had been in high school before that, I had, I had written for the for the newspaper, like the school sports and baseball and stuff, <clears throat> and um, I had written poetry and uh, and prose and mostly comic stuff, right? Um, 
but I hadn't but I never kept anything and matter of fact I didn't keep anything this was 1953 4 that I was in Victoria and I remember clearly that I didn't start keeping the stuff I wrote until 1958 um, when I, I was already out of the Air Force for and I made that I remember the very first poems I kept put them in my very first binder of keeping stuff they were crap but at least they were a result of my being kind of interested and committed you know? whereas beforehand it just been like one of the many things because I wanted to be an actor I wanted to I wanted to be a, a, a visual artist I wanted to do all the different things that kids in small towns wanted to do that because they didn't get to see that stuff right um, and then they got, those things got stripped away and I decided that it was a writer that I wanted to be so it wasn't until so I don't know what I was writing I was whatever it was I threw it away no I wasn't I don't think I was writing or if, that's hard to imagine that I was not writing but whatever it was um, I have, have no memory of it lost my job Wendy broke up with me so I joined the Air Force <laughs> lost my job Wendy broke up with me I flunked French barely got through history and I said, oh, to hell with this, I'm joining the Air Force, so that's why I didn't go back to Vic College. Ah, fooey, under V. V, it doesn't say Victoria, it says Verona. <laughs> hmm. Gene and I, this is curious, like, we, um, this couple of months ago, we went back, to, I'm going to read Verona, 1966. A couple of months ago, we went to Verona. And it's the first time, except going through it on train, that I'd been to Verona since 1966. So that's 45 years. So this was then. Verona, 1966. Except for Tony Bellet, I was the only gentleman I knew in Verona. And not much of one, to tell the truth, which I always do in poems, as McFadden would say, until I found Dante Alighieri in the middle of a clear plaza, and all the other poets on rooftops looking down toward him, and for that moment, me. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and so we went there, and Gene took a picture of me with the with the statue of of uh, Dante. That was pretty neat. This is Wellington, 1984. This is the same Tony Bullet in it. A tree with small lemons on a hilltop above Catherine Mansfield did not hide the sun. The sun was in the north, and I was in the south, looking for a sour story. Down the hill road, just a little from Tony Ballette's house, was a fish and chip shack with malt vinegar. We listened while the tones led us down and up again. That poem is full of clever puns and rhyme, which show up nicely on the page. Attar of Roses. In Thracian Turkey, huge mosques dominate towns where men with no legs push along in low carts. Bent people in black hobble through dust. By rust, skinny old women dig in garbage heaps, but children dance under the sun around an old man asleep on a chair, white of hair, in a white dusty place beside the cobbled road. In Thracian Bulgaria, the towns are gardens, streets filled with roses. Between towns, picturesque Slav women work in Balkan fields, sunflowers to the horizon, grapes, cabbages, wheat, roses. It is, I said, stunning, more stunning than the posters of picturesque women working in fields. Soldiers play accordions. Our hotel room was full of roses. Marlena Dietrich's voice came through the window. We vowed to live out our lives in Plovdiv. That was highly 
sophisticated and intricate poetry, babe. <laughs> In fact, one of the one of the things I did at Vic College was I went out and I bought two rabbits, a male rabbit and a female rabbit, and put them on the campus. <laughs> <laughs>